you know, I would mention to all of you, now, I know you have your issue with the vaccine or whatever, and I have my issues with it too. Wallahi, when things get easier for the vaccine, you need to go to, you need to, you need to, go to Medina and Mecca. And from there, you're going to be able to see. I'm gonna, I want to say something to you. And, and I'm saying this um, to make a statement, not to debase Jelani. I went up to the uh, Jabal North, and there were little pebbles there. There were little pebbles on the mountain, there were little pebbles. And in my mind, I said, I swear by Allah, the Sheikh Jelani sees less than this pebble to me. Mm-hmm. He's insignificant. At that moment, I said, I, it's like, it, it's, what, what is greater than this? It's, it's, it's nothing to me. And this, this is what I need to be. And, and, and so this, this great figure that we thought was, you're not even like this. You're not even a pebble at that point. And I'm not saying that it's, I'm not saying that he himself is on self. But I'm saying everything that stood for what it was a facade, all of it. And um and and and, and so and so that's what I'm saying. And and I felt like a pebble. But I'm just looking at that whole situation of um that whole situation. That's how I felt. That was on my mind. And um, that's what came. And it didn't come when I was on the mountain. It came later on because I picked up the dirt from the mountain and I put it inside of the deer park bottle and I have it in my I have it upstairs. As a matter of fact, the dirt that came from that from that mountain, I have it upstairs. And I think about that all the time. That's what's significant to me. It's and so that's what I want to say. I know it's getting late, and we've been on here for some time, and I really appreciate it, inshallah. Mm-hmm. I just want to add real quick that uh, it's funny because it's so many times that when we're having our conversations, we're like, oh, man, the same exact thing happened to me. So if, if we go back to when I first publicly spoke out, it was from the Prophet's Masjid when I was, alhamdulillah, I got to make Umar there. Yeah. And, uh, and I was just sitting. It was after Fajr, and I'm just sitting back watching all the thousands of Muslims just, you know, from all over the world just walk around me, and it's it's very impressive, and it puts you in your place. And I was just sitting there, and I had this almost the same exact thought, not specifically about Jelani, but just I was like, because I didn't speak out yet, I didn't say anything yet publicly, and I was like, man, that whole this whole Jamaat stuff, this is nothing. It's not anything. It's this is the Uma. Look where I'm at. And I just made a video. Hey, this is, I forget, I don't remember what I said, but that was the first time because I realized how insignificant what I had been through and what we were upon was compared to what this dean of Islam is. Alhamdulillah. And, 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 and even when you, when you, when I first seen the Kaaba, first of all, I didn't know the Kaaba was that magnificent and big. When, 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 when you go to these, when you go to these places and you, and you see the Muslims making to walk around it and you have an individual that is saying somebody is a disbeliever for not making to walk around a dilapidated, incomplete. <laughs> Listen, when you are painting the picture, you have, to, you have to use the most accurate colors to depict the masterpiece and what you want to present to the world. Yep. So, so it's just like when, when you when you look at that, it can almost make an individual angry and have gear up over protective technology for this religion. It's like, wait, listen, you have not the problem. You see the little if you see the birds, the birds make to walk around. And for you to witness that, and for you to be in that moment, you may not even be thinking about this, but later on, you'll reflect back on when you look at your videos, you look at your pictures, and you say, wait a minute, how can you call somebody a munafiq when this is where the Muslims are making to walk? This is, I'm at the kibble. You know what's funny? And you'll appreciate this too, uh, Ustav Mubarak. I have my phone, and my wife, we said, you know what? He said, let me put on my Wi-Fi real quick. And just, I just was something just said, let me put on my, I'm sitting at the Kaaba, let me put on my Wi-Fi. And it said like, it said like, you know, the Kaaba. Like, and I'm thinking like, and I'm just thinking about it. So I went over here, I went over my GPS, I went over my GPS, right? And I, the GPS had the, the Kaaba, like the, the symbol of the Kaaba there. And it was just like, I said, I'm at the Kimbo right now. Huh. But all of the, this, this, I'm at the Kimbo, like, it's like, it's, 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 it's like, you 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 can't the Kibla's the Kibla. You can't even make you can make a lot of interaction out of it. Of course, yep. you're making the Kibla, but it's the Kibla. I know I was trying. You know, I know I was trying to wrap this up, but yeah, you know, I just want to know because when we were talking, about it, I got chills thinking about it again. Because whew, tell me, because you know how you walk in, right? I'm like everybody follow his advice, and you just gotta go. Make it your most your biggest priority to just go, right? Um, but tell me your feeling because when you start when you walk into the haram and you walk to like the masjid part and you walk and then there's that point where it you see the top yeah like because like for me once i like it was just almost like i was in another world it was it wasn't real at that point like like it's like okay i'm in mecca you know I, we flew into medina you know we seen the prophet's masjid in the distance and we just drove right to mecca got our or we didn't we stopped got our ikram on and then you know took that long drive to mecca um 
got there, seen the lights, and it's still like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm wow, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in uh, Mecca, you know what I mean? But then once, like, you just see that black tip pop up, it was just like, you can't, I can't even describe the feeling. But I was thinking about that, and this chills came down to me because you're just reminding them all this, this, this power. I just, there's no way I can really explain it besides if anybody that watched anime, <laughs> I, if I'm still here, Mubarak doesn't can't relate. So you know we'll go through like your kids for this one. But if you watch, if you watch anime, is there's, there's an anime called Bleach, right? And they have this thing that they call spiritual pressure, right? So when like the character is really strong, and then like he enters the scene, his pressure is so the pr his spiritual pressure is so strong that like people can't even stand up people pass out that's the only way i can describe it is when once i seen that black tip it was just like overwhelming and i was in another world like tell me your experiences like when you first seen the kaaba i mean when i first seen the kaaba i i didn't realize how many people was there until i snapped out of that little youth spiritual euphoric moment it was one of the most incredible things i've ever, I, I've ever seen you know uh mecca had more of an effect on me than medina did um mm. Um, because that that right there was just that right there was just it was one of the most incredible things I've ever and you know it was nighttime with the sky and it was kind of cool and it was just one of the most it was and this is what it felt like to me I felt like I really felt that I was people say well I felt like I was dreaming like I really felt that it was fake like it was yeah, so yeah. unbelievable that I could it, it wasn't it wasn't real to me like you know you you had to after the I, even when I was making my like oh, my third to what I was like man I said I'm not I mean, like, I mean, like, I was like, yeah, like, 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 this is, this is, this is it. Like, this is, this is the what, what is better than this? Like, and so, yeah, you, know, you can't go there unless a law, you know, you know, if a law, you know, he gives you the invitation there, ask a lot to give everybody an invitation who has not been there, and also to allow us to go back. And, um, and I just remember it being big, I remember it being so, it was like a glow around it, too. Um, um the letters, the golden letters, just looking at everything. And, um, and then after I signed that letter, I said, man, it's a lot, it's a lot of people. And it was one of the, it's an election. It's like, um, I want to say this too, and Ustad Mubarak can appreciate this. You know, when you make a lot, um, even a good salat that you make, some things may come into your mind that you aren't supposed to be uh, thinking. Allah's my witness to this. And I have a mind that travels a lot. <laughs> I never had one negative thought when I was at the Kaaba. I couldn't even think one. Like, it was like, it was impossible. Like, Allah removed all of that. Like everything was like let, let's give an example, like because they went there too. You know, because normally when you go to the match and say, man, that's a pretty girl, just say that in your mind. You I was not even thinking that I just, you just say, Oh, that's a sister. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. even it wasn't even something that where I was the, the focus and the attention and the just just see everything. Maybe we need to do an RTF about about making Umrah and Hajj, mashallah, and, yeah. and how all of that is and going to the road and all of that. I didn't get a chance to go to the road. I know you went to the road the, um Mm. Didn't get a chance to go there. Yo, um, one of the, one of the one of the big things that I noticed and is the, so you know the amount of birds that are there, the amount of pigeons uh, yeah. that are there, right? Mm -hmm. There's this is how you it's just certain things you cannot explain to non-Muslims unless they go and see this stuff for themselves. If I go to any like Times Square or down to the park where there's just a bunch of pigeons and whatever, you're gonna see bird poop here, oh. there, wherever. You will not see one drop of bird feces anywhere in the Kaaba. Not no. one spot will you see it. And yeah, they have the cleaners there and all that, but you would see like on a railing, right, a yeah. wall where the where they can't reach, not one spot. Oh, like it's oh man, let me love. And here's another thing, right? This is this is deep. This is deep. So you're in the desert, right? And this is I, I, I when we went to go get some biryani at nighttime, um, um. I said, listen, man, I said, um, I said, there's no mosquitoes here. Hmm. And they said, no, there are mosquitoes here. They just don't, they don't bite you because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said you cannot shed a Muslim blood here. This was one of the unbelievable things I've ever I, I, I've ever heard of. <laughs> like, not, not just saying that, that's so true. Something that you can't even believe. Not even, not even a bud that you're like, you know, get it's up my face. Not, it's, <laughs> it's like the, the level of respect of place and um even the bird poop thing, you don't even realize that until you just say it, say it to part because you see them flying, you see yep. them flying, you see them flying at it. This is when you look up, you got to kind of like look up beyond the lights to see them, but but they're yep. there. I mean, you know, and yep. it's just like they're flying around, and it's like you don't see <laughs> of them pooping anywhere. And it's just like, yeah. I mean, that that place, and one of the things will, and like people like Hussein Hawk that's on, and Abu Hawk that's on, and other people that's on. If you really want to solidify, because you're because how you feel needs to be solidified, because you have to also understand me and. 
people don't talk about also me and Shay Jeffrey, we went to Hodge was that helped fortify us. Uh, and when you go to give salam, I just want you to think when you go to give salam to the Bible, that's a completely different level of of, of that's you, when you you can go to, you can go through Bible salam and get the prophet and Bible salam. I just want you to think about that too. And I want you to go out and uh, I want you to think about Sheikh Jaffer coming from Bible Salam, giving the prophet Abu Bakr Salams and him picking up his phone and saying that somebody on anonymous account is refuting me. And it's just like, like, yo, this is not even something that is this like, I'm, I just gave the prophet Abu Bakr Salam. I mean, like, 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 I don't care. Like, it's like, no, what? You know what I mean? Yo, so, go ahead. It's, it's, it's amazing because like, and what I'm telling and, and, and people, like, this is one of the questions we had in very in the beginning. And it kind of relates to the question that we had about, you know, the person that's being pressured not to speak out. Take care of yourself first. I can't stress enough how important it is to, it's not just about speaking out and making it public, but to make it clear upon what you are, what you're upon, because that is actually a step towards the law, right? When you make that step towards the law, I can't, it's a promise from Allah. He's going to bless you. And after you do that, it's going to be confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. So I say that to just preface, like when I got, just getting the opportunity to get on a plane, if that plane would crash in the sea or whatever, just to get on a plane to head towards making Irma was one confirmation. Like I've been in TMOA for 20 something years. The, the year I leave, I go make Umrah, <laughs> right? The whole time I'm thinking, oh, I gotta go to Pakistan. I gotta get permission, can I go to Pakistan? The year I leave, I get to go to Umrah. Then, then when I get to go to Umrah, it was just, we go, me and my wife, she's pregnant. Not just she's like pregnant, pregnant, like like she's giving birth, and you know what I'm saying? Like she's 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 showing, you know what I mean? Can't do a lot of walking, so we're like, you know, we'll just walk, we'll make to waffle, we'll stay away from people, do the long rat. You know, we had it all planned because you don't want people bumping her in their stomach and all that. We walk in, I, we walk in, we see the Kaaba, we walk up, we walk directly to straight to the Kaaba. Lovely. It just opened up, we walked right in, touched it. You know, made our do us and then started making to off. We walked. How many people can say that they can walk in? You you see, like now you can't even do it because I have it blocked up. But everybody can see pictures of the cop and see how many people are there trying to get close, trying to touch it, trying to kiss the black stone. We walked. We didn't alter our path or anything. We walked straight from the outside, from the hotel, all the way straight to the cop right up to the to the black covering. Alhamdulillah. Then the other, the other part when we're at Medina, and Alhamdulillah, like. It's a race to get to the Rauda. It's a race and a fight, right? But if you're practicing the Sunnah, like you, most likely you won't get in there because you're not allowed to be pushing and shoving and all the stuff these people do to get in there. But alhamdulillah, I just walked in. It just, but this is just confirmation after confirmation after confirmation that it's like Allah's telling you, you made the right choice. But real quick, um, I, we have someone who jumped on who wants to say something. Our brother Hussein Hawk, he said he couldn't take it anymore. He has something to say. So Hussein, go ahead and uh, go ahead and speak up. All right. Okay. I'm going to say a couple of things, inshallah. First, I want to uh, acknowledge the beautiful um, message of Dawah that was uh, presented today. I thought it was excellent. I thought it was honestly some of y'all finest work. Um, beautiful um, articulation from my brother Hanif, mashallah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, honestly, the I was actually, <laughs> I'm not one to hold back words, so I, I have to get this off my chest. I was actually about to uh, disconnect and think, okay, uh, you know, mashallah, everything was going well. Then when you guys started speaking about the uh, the trip to Umrah, it, it, you know, it, it almost honestly moved me to tears because mm. I feel, wallahi, wallahi, I feel love. I feel the love, I feel the passion, I feel the, you know, I feel the sincerity when you brothers are speaking and, it, and it's, it's beautiful. Honestly, it's, it's really beautiful, it's, it's, it's moving. And uh, see, you know, now I'm feeling a certain way. Now I gotta go get my keys thrown up over there because I can't, I can't have you brothers having any stories, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't I, and I was, I was actually gonna speak to you, uh, I was gonna give you a call, Hanif, uh, and speak to you about this, but just something that you had said about the, um, the, the rocks or the pebbles that you had picked up. Now, uh, we, we both share um, companionship with uh, Sal then, as, as you know. And uh, Sal, actually, after you came back from your trip, I believe you gave him some, some dirt or pebbles or dust. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot all about that. Man. But yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me out. Hear me out. Mashallah. He, because he and I are very close, he actually came to my house and brought some of the dirt and the pebbles, ah. you told me it was from you. 
and this is back when everybody was chill. This is back when we were loving each other and we, we you know, we cared about each other. And, you know, I still do feel like we all still care about each other. But wallahi, wallahi, I have, when you're telling me this, you're telling the, the audience this story about the rocks and stuff. And I'm sitting here reflecting like, wow, I'm sitting here right now with rocks and pebbles from Medina or, you know, from, from, um, where they were from. I'm not totally sure where you picked them up from. Um, it's Mecca. Mecca, Mecca. That, okay, that's, that's correct. And they're sitting on my shelf right now, mashallah. And, and, and it's traveled and it's been there for since as long as you came back, which I imagine for a few years or so. It's been sitting up there. And I just thought that that was very, uh, you know, it's moving. It's very inspirational. And um, again, I don't know how, I don't know where people could, could find, I don't know how people could find fault with people speaking in such, a passionate way about the Holy Last Festival, so about, um, um, uh, about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and just about unity as a whole, and us just on the show, just sharing love. And, and listen, here, here's another part I'm saying, and one of the things that I, I love about you is that I told Sheikh Jaffer about this. You're a big, you want everybody to come back together, and you just want everybody to come back together on the cross. Because let me tell you something. What took place at the Al Bakr retreat was a great thing, but now we need to do that upon the Quran and soon look how powerful it will be. And people like how you mentioned, who's still my brother Salman, I, I've seen him uh, not, not too long ago. It was a real, real good conversation that we had, even though it was brief. I seen him, uh, one of my daughters had an appointment, and uh, he, he, he had to be there, and we had to meet each other. It was unavoidable, but it was very pleasant. And he doesn't know how much love that I have for him. Um, I, I mean, you know, and even people like uh, Abdul Rasak, I'm only mentioning these names in goodness. Abdul Rasak, and you look at um, people like, um, you know, just individuals like that. I think about them all the time. And um, and we will be together. Allah can bring us all Allah, together. Allah. He's not going to bring us together. And listen, we, we, I refuse to, re re it doesn't matter how much I love somebody. I refuse to re unite with somebody. They are misguidance. I mean, that, that I love Sal, but I don't love him more than I love Allah. You know what I mean? And I told Sal before, I said, listen, when you're ready to go to Medina and Mecca, I will put my people in the and, and, and you will just be on a plane out of DC and, and you'll be on Saudi Airlines it's on a 13 hour flight. You got a new cell phone there. You mix a lot and you land in, and you land in Medina and, and, and you go to Mecca and, and, and you live your life, man. I mean, mashallah, just, mashallah. We're going to talk. We're going to talk, brother. Listen, saying, <laughs> I cannot take this. I cannot enjoy it. I'm saying this. Let me put this in the context for you, because I know you like context. I do. TMOA kept you away from the. The TMOA kept us away from an individual who we who we who we um, centered our life around. Okay, but then it kept us away from who the Ummah centered their life around Muhammad. So there's two major transgressions. So when you go to Mecca and you go to the Kaaba, of course, and then when you go to Medina, when you first go to Bab al Salam and you are standing a feet a feet away from the Prophet. And so so let me explain something to you about the Prophet's grave, right? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The way he passed away 1,443 years ago with his eyelash and his lips and the color of his cheeks and his curly hair and his shoulders, he's in perfect intact the, intact the way he is because Allah is a legend. He preserves the unbiya. And so I just want you to think like, sometimes you think about it, like, this is not a box of bones by Yahudah Ben This is a perfectly, he's perfectly preserved. He's, he's 63 years old. That's, that's how the prophet is. The prophet is not 1,400. He's 63. He's perfectly preserved. And so I want you to think about that when you're standing in front of him and you're saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ya Rasulullah. And you have whatever, I, I had a private conversation with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I asked him if he can accept me in his ummah, if he can be with me and did some private things. He said, you can just have a private conversation. There's no middleman. It's just you and the Prophet of Bush. You have an umar there as well, too. You want to give them salams, of course, because they are there. And, um, and then you go to Jannah al baqi where all of the Sahabas are buried in the graveyard right behind the Prophet's Muslim. You give all of the Sahabas. Like, like, let, like let me explain something to you. What in the world is better than this? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean what, what, what in the, listen, let me explain something to you. The day that I left Medina, my last day in Medina, I gave the Prophet salams about three, uh, maybe, like, maybe 30, 40 times. I went to Bible <laughs> Listen, when I got on the plane, I told Rahila, I said, I cannot look at myself leaving the city. I did not want to see myself physically leaving like a plane lifting up from Jeddah. I did not want to see myself physically. I couldn't take it. I, don't, I just want to say, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, just, I just landed in Washington, D.C. I cannot, physically, I cannot physically take myself and look out the window watching the city become, because the city is a city of Noor. It's a city of light, Medina and Mecca. It's a city of peace. It's a city of, we had Sheikh Hasid, you know what I mean, um, uh, walk us around and just just thinking about, you know, like how the moon looked and 
how everybody was just so happy. And when Salah is being made, it's like an electricity that you never ever could feel. And you have the bro, the, bro. I can't, I can't. Bro, I mean, listen, I, listen, I can't, listen. I can't, I can't take this is how out. this is how you sum it up. This is how you sum it up. I can't, bro. You will enter crying, and you will leave crying. Yes. You will once you go to Medina. You will not like you know we we talk in R two F chat like yeah I want to make I want to make Hydra here I want to live in this Muslim country this Muslim country listen once oh, you visit Medina this? you will not want to live anywhere else besides Medina there's hadith about this that no believer enters Medina not loving it not leaving loving it and yeah. it's it's you cannot I'm I'm just I'm getting emotional thinking about because you actually have to put yourself you know how, like you you suffer trauma and part of part of dealing with trauma is that you like forget about it. That's what you do when you actually leave Redina and you come back to the States. Like, oh, I got to forget about all this because this stuff right here is literally making me emotional thinking about when we were actually getting in the cab to go to the airport. And it's like, I'm leaving? I will be here. I will, I will stay here and I will mop the floors along with all these other – this will be my life. I'll just sit here. And it, there's so many different things that you get to do that, like, you read these hadiths, right, that, like, yeah, we know they're true as Muslims, right? But, like, for instance, like, Ibrahim alayhi salam asked a lot, like, bring this back to life. Show me how you create life. And Allah's like, do you doubt me? He's like, no, I just want confirmation, right? Just, I believe you, but give me the extra confirmation. I want to see it happen. Like, for instance, you read the hadith that, that he said that Zamzam satisfies your thirst and your hunger. You go to Mecca, Medina, and all you drink is Zamzam. You force yourself, I need to go eat something because I just want to eat something here. They have a lot of McDonald's, a lot of this and that. But you actually never get hungry. Yeah. Wow. You can wow. put it to test. Like, I was like, let me test this. Let me just wow. drink water. My wife who's pregnant, who's, she's got another being inside of her we literally had to force ourselves to go eat let's go eat something i'm not hungry but whatever we're here let's go eat something because you could literally just sit there and drink you could literally go to mecca medina if you had no money to buy any food and you had nowhere to sleep you just get on a plane you go there and stay in the kaaba and the masjid and you won't need anything else wow yeah you know you know what we need to do guys you know what we need to do inshallah you know uh, with the permission of allah inshallah you know hopefully um and uh, very, very soon in the near future, we need to uh, put together some type of campaign uh, or program to where we can get together and start to assist in, um, you know, people making the trip over there. I think that would just well, be, I'm talking about. You got to get the. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to do it now. Oh, man. Oh, oh God's killer. I forgot all the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, let me shut my lips. Let me zip it. When you go. And um, like I said, that's why I said I'm, I really want to go and I'm in a position to go, but I'm just not, I'm a little bit, vaccine still early for me. And um, But I wanted to say, when you go, man, it's, um, you know, it's deep because when I was in Washington, D.C. and we, we we flew out Saudi Airline, something happened there where, subhanAllah, there was a musalla right next to the the, the, uh, the the gate that we was going until they get on the plane. And wallahi, it was like Salatul salat Dhuhr at the time. And all of the Muslims went inside of this, this musalla there. And I at that point there, I said, yo, this is different. <laughs> We're not even playing yet, and they came like all of the Muslims. Like there was five of us a lot. Like the Muslims. Like we all went there. Like and it, it was just so. And then so about the mother came on in the plane. There was a Muslim in there, and it was like yo, it's time for like everybody. You know, it's time for Muslim on the plane. So it's like yo, and I was just like yo, like the way they made Salat and just how everything was, and it was just like so they had. Martin, because they got TV shows and then Martin, they have all of that. Wallahi, I never got so upset at Martin. I'm thinking like, I don't even want to even crazy how many just to tie it back into like the spiritual abuse things because you have to go because you will confirm a lot of lies that we've been told for 20 something years like for instance they took they took the place where um prophet muhammad said was alleged to be born and made it into bathrooms they leveled it and he did all these different things to disrespect prophet muhammad say something uh, one he wasn't even born there two it's a library and they sealed it off so no one can get to right so like you know, all their bathrooms and like these things are not true. They're leveling like, and then when you realize that how many people are there, and you're like, oh, they're they're tearing down Sahaba's houses and this and that. Listen, 
They there's no pot. Look at Islam. How many billions of people are Muslim? How many millions of people go and make Hajj? How many people? How many millions of people? There's no choice but to keep expanding, and it's going to keep it. The the masjid of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right now is bigger than the entire city of Medina back when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was there. Just the masjid is bigger than the entire city during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's just wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm getting emotional. I'm gonna have to shut down, boys. I can't even. I can't have my wife and kids seeing me like this. <laughs> I have to creep around a little bit. <laughs> I got, I got, I do got a book here, and this is this has been incredible. I want people if they ever if they ever get to the end of this, I want people to listen to what we said here and how we're talking about Mecca Medina, and I want them to talk about the enemies of Aqua Bay, how we're bitter, how we're so hateful, how we want to destroy, how we revive. The dead, like all of these things are fake in their lives. But when we talk about this Medina trip, and um, and uh, ninety nine percent of TMO have been has been deprived of this, and so you have to ask yourself why. I mean, I mean, wouldn't you want if you love the messenger more than the entire world? Wouldn't you be one of and much than that? Because let, let, because let me explain something to you. Medina is a totally different world. I, 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 you know what's deep, I, and I had this thought. Um, when I was walking back to my hotel, because everything's within walking distance, I said, I said, I don't believe that this place is on earth. Like, like, it, like it, you didn't even feel like you was even on, like the world that we're from, like, it's like, this is, this is Islam. Like, it's like, it's, mm. like, like, it's like, so I was in a store getting a thole, right, for the Eid. And I was like one block away from Masjid al-Nabi, right? So, and so, I was getting ready to buy some expensive tholes. And the store owner said, it's time for Salat. Normally people would say, pay me, go to Salat. He said, no, it's not. Like he did not even want the transaction to be complete. Mm -hmm. Wow. He said, wow. no, it's time for Salat. Like it's like, don't, I don't care what you're doing. Like we, yo, come yeah. back if you want to. Like don't, it's not like, yo, hurry up and pay me. Like in a minute, like, yo, they call, yo, we out. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, like I'm going, you can stay here if you want, but I'm, like, I was like, all right, well, I said, don't you, he's like, nah, it's time for Salat. Like, like he was just like, like it ain't no more deal. Like that's over. Yeah. Like you should pay for it. Like you come back after if you want. But right yeah. now it's about a law. And I, when he did that, it was crazy. So another time I got lost. I purposely got lost in the deal. And it was these little boys. They were playing soccer or whatever. So the police was on the on, on the um on the um on the loudspeaker saying, you know, uh, it's time for Salah Hayala Salah to tell them to come to Salah. So one of the so the, so the boys, this is this is unbelievable. Subhanallah, man. This is this is unbelievable. So the, I'm watching the police officer stop, he gets out. I said, man, said, man, he's about to discipline him. He's literally, we're really outside the walls of the, of the prophet's mushroom. Yeah. He grabs his <laughs> a spot, brother. He says, come on. He, he, he gets them all. He said, we're going to make some lot right here. Mm. He uh... stopped. He, he stopped. He didn't, he didn't beat him with a stick. He didn't say it was when I, he was like, yo, all right, well, yo, I, I'm going to meet y'all right here. This way, y'all want to get down. Let's do it. So yeah. he got there and he he established he, he they, and because you can hear everything, you know. He just they just followed the mom like that and he got back in the stuff. And I was just like, yo, man, this is this is this is different. Yeah. Uh, this is on this is on some I thought he because you gotta understand he gonna get out and he's gonna hit him with a stick. You know what I mean? Like, nah, <laughs> yeah. he got out, he, he, he got us a lot brother and say, yo, let's do it. And I and I gotta I gotta say this because someone mentioned it in the comments. And it's you know why people from TMOA haven't made Umrah or Hijra or or, or or Hajj. And you know, and, and this is why. When you, when, when Alhamdulillah, Allah has given, like Hanif had mentioned, that having gear, having healthy jealousy for Islam, you know, when you start getting, when you start understanding who Allah is, who Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is, how important this religion is, and you have these experiences directly of going to Mecca and Medina, and then when you hear statements like Islamburg and Islamburg are the holiest places in the world, that should piss you off. That should make you really angry. Because it makes me angry because now I'm thinking about the Kaaba, I'm thinking about Medina, and I'm I'm remembering these statements of this is the most holiest places in the world. And to even not even disrespect the Kaaba and Medina like that in itself, to go even further and say that the Kaaba is even more lowly because you know they used to have idols in it and our Islamberg didn't. Our, our like this stuff should make you angry. And this is why when you say, okay, why oh you're obsessed, you can't get over it. I, I'm over we're over what happened to us, but as a Muslim. We will never be over anybody that disrespects our Lord, his prophet, and his religion. Mm. And if you and if you take take make that trip to Umrah 
you will come back changed. I don't care if you're a diehard Jamadi. You will go there and you will come back changed. If you don't, something is wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, listen, and here's another thing, right? When, when you go to these places, um, when you go to these places and you see, um, you, you have to step off. Because, like, that's, that's cool. I'm, I'm going to, I got to leave there in a minute, too. But let me say this statement real quick. I, like I said, Ustad Mubarak, when you, when you, and all this thing, when you, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening, happen. there's a lot of conversations that's going to be happening with you inwardly. And when you start to say, I'm walking in the prophet's house, I'm walking in Allah's house, this is the Kaaba. Every Anbiya made this, every, every, single, every single messenger made Umrah and Hajj. Like, so, so it's like, you, you think, you, so when you have that, then these conversations are going to be playing themselves in, in your head. All of those stories that you're, all of those things you didn't even know that you even remember are going to be coming in your head. You're like, yo, listen, hold up, listen, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to walk. I'm getting ready the first time. I'm getting ready to give the prophet salam. Like, I'm, like, like what possibly can be better than this? Like, yes. like, it's like, I'm getting ready to, this is the next thing. Listen, it's so intense. Those guards are going to be rushing you because you can live, you literally just can stand there all night. You cannot eat there. <laughs> salam for like 40 hours. <laughs> yeah. Because there's nothing, this is paradise on earth, man. Like, it's like, yo, like, they gotta, like, all right, you know, come on, Haji, come on, Haji, just, you know, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta they're rushing you out because it's like you were clean to it. And here you have an individual, an in, in, in individual saying that this is, this, this, there's something that appeared on the wall, right? There is, you, you, you don't need to see no miracles in, 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 in Mecca and Medina. Yeah. It's all there for you, the tangible stuff. The miracles is the birds not pooping. The, the miracles is the mosquitoes not biting you. The miracles is the umma coming together. The miracle is the fact that how clean that place is. That's another thing we're talking about. Mm. How clean it is in there. It's clean. The bathrooms, all of that. The Zamzam, we didn't even talk about the Shake Jafar mentioned the Zamzam. The Zamzam, this is real Zamzam war. This is like they're literally coming up, coming with tanks on their backs, coming from the well, giving you water. Here, take this. There's the fountains, the, the, the water fountains, they, they come, mm. they, they are, they, they have, um, Pipes that go down to the well of Zamzam. All of that. With Sayyidina Ibrahim and Hajar, uh, uh, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, alayhi salatu wa sallam, Hajar, where they walk, you go to Sakma and Marwa, all of that. All, mm -hmm. So when you see all of that, bro, and the individual is telling you, like, it's no way possible that you can even make a statement like that. But like I said, um, I do got to drop off here, inshallah. It's been a yep. pleasure. If you made it today, I really appreciate you. And uh, inshallah, we'll do some more pull ups like that. And um, it's been a real good one. Who's talking about it? I appreciate you staying this long, bro. I mean, no, no problem, no problem. I was trying to get some work done, but at the same time, I was still dialed in. I didn't get the work done, but I will say, <laughs> I know you got to run. I know you got to run. I didn't get the work done, and I was just kind of looking at something, and I, <laughs> I probably lost a little bit of money. But I think, honestly, and let me say this, honestly, I have never felt more jealous in my life. I have not. <laughs> And I, I'm serious, and it's, you know, I, I have never felt more left out. Um, you know how people see a good movie, you ain't seen it, or, you know, went and did something, you haven't done it. I mean, literally, I'm sitting here, I'm really trying not to cry, because I, I had many opportunities as a young man, 19 or 20, and beyond. I remember, I'm thinking of the times where I had more than enough money and opportunity to go and, and, and do these things, but I, but I didn't for whatever reason. And I made many trips to this place for EET and away this, that, and other, spent a lot of money and wasted a lot of money. And um, I hope that's not a punishment from Allah to keep me away from it, you know, but um, mm -hmm. uh, I hope, I, I ask Allah to give, uh, if I'm able to go, which my intention right now is to go, that Allah give you brothers part of the reward, if any, that I get for I mean, it, because uh, you definitely have influenced me to literally uh, make it uh, number one on my list.